Welcome back to the Talk Online. Today we are interviewing one of my best friends, one of my best training partners in the Chicago area. Last year we stood on the Stage 3 platform together. We're taking a look at Michael Torres. I love that scream at the end. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that just got me hyped up now watching it. <laughs> I know, man. It's been so crazy. Um, you know, I talked to Daniel Gill and Nick Hansen, and uh, everybody's kind of dealing with quarantine a little bit different, but it's hard not training and seeing you guys. Dude, tell me about it. I mean, it's been too long. It's been way, way too long. It's weird. <laughs> So I know that you've been spending a lot of time up in Michigan uh, with Sarah. Um, so, like, what have you guys been doing in quarantine? Um, we've just been trying to mo plan a modified wedding and trying to buy a house. And I'm just getting back to work building over here. What's the wedding planning like? Yeah, so it's it's really weird. It's like, you know, we kind of have to make, like, a, a plan B based on what we think like the regulations would be um, at that time. So like you know, if, if there's restrictions to the group size, you know, let's say it's 50 people or 70 people, whatever, we, that's kind of like our plan A. And we're also planning like a plan B, uh, which would be just something small held at our house. Um, there's also talks of just, you know, going to a courthouse. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> A little bit weird. I mean, like, we still have to, like, book the vendors and, like, make sure everything is following, like, the, the laws and the guidelines and such. And we're all just, we're just kind of going in blind here because we don't know what's going to happen on June 28th. I, I've been kind of asking everybody that's, that I've been talking to this because I honestly don't know. You guys are such close friends of mine, but I don't know your stories. Um, and I've learned a lot. But so... I wanted to ask you, how did you start Ninja? Okay. Um, so, like, the start of my Ninja story, I feel like, was like every everyone else's. Um, you know, you watch it on TV, you find a gym near you, and, you know, you, you go and you try. Um, but mine was a little different um, in the sense that, you know, I got in a gym near me and, you know, started training. It wasn't your actual, like, Ninja Warrior gym like we have today. It was a gymnastics gym that had maybe a quarter to, an, you know, an eighth of the gym was some Ninja Warrior stuff. We had like a warped wall and a salmon ladder and a very small rock wall, probably the size of your average bedroom. Um, and, you know, some cliffhangers just slapped on the wall. Um, so that was my training <laughs> gym for like two years. Um, but I think my career actually started when I had my first competition at you know, Jamie Ron's gym at which at the time was Pinnacle Parkour Cherry Hill. Um, and that's where I met a lot of, you know, awesome ninjas and the Jamie Ron himself. And I was, I remember being starstruck, you know, going to take a picture <laughs> with him since I ended up taking first place. I was like, uh, do I just like flex? Do I stand here and smile? Like he's so cool. And, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was like fanboying, you know, he was somebody who I watched on TV and it was real. He was like a celebrity to me at the time. And I remember I had come up from DC and I was actually at that competition and I'm kind of sizing up the competition and I'm thinking like, okay, like if I perform well, like, I think I can win this. I think I can do this. And, you know, I had a really good run. I put together a really solid run. I think it put me in first place at the time. I felt really good about it. And then all of a sudden this kid comes out of nowhere and just dominates the, the course and i'm looking around and i'm asking people like who who is this like because i've been doing ninja for a little while at this point and i'm like who is like who is this guy and people had told me they're like oh that's hey, that's michael torres um he's in the military 
So, and I remember thinking like, <laughs> oh man, like maybe he won't be around that long. <laughs> <laughs> no. you were good man like you came out of the gates like so hot like you were so strong as a kid yeah i mean looking at some of the stuff i'm like what the heck why like i, I wish i could still do some of that stuff now but like i don't know it was awesome and actually it's it's funny that we're talking about this now because i was just going through like my camera roll and i actually found the video of my first competition or one of the first two at Jamie Ron Jim, and I was watching it. I'm like, holy cow, have things evolved? Like, what? <laughs> what? You know, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was being in Vegas. And this is a memory that I have. Stage four had just wrapped up, and Daniel and Drew had just finished a rope climb. Matt and Akbar are standing on the platform, and they're starting to announce the USA versus the world teams, which among the ninja community, like getting picked for USA versus the world is such a huge honor. I mean, so many people dream of like being on that team and having a good enough season to get picked for that. And so they're starting to go mm -hmm. through the names and they're calling everybody out. And all of a sudden they start talking about this guy and they go through his stats and they start saying stuff. And even before they said that he didn't have to use his safety pass, I'm doing this like, cause you're standing behind me and I'm doing this. I'm like looking back at you and you're just, you're just like staring at Matt and Akbar. You're not like, you don't notice me looking at you, but you're just like staring, but you have this look <laughs> on your face. That's like, I, it's not me. Like, I wonder, Oh, I wonder who they're talking about. <laughs> like, <laughs> and all of a sudden they say, just... and they didn't, he didn't have to use his safety patch and everyone just blew up your face. Like your jaw drops. <laughs> Did, like, what was that moment? Like, it was a high and a low. It started off low. So, like, they brought you, Ethan, and uh, and Jesse up front, and I was, you know, walking with you guys, and they said, oh, no, sorry, we only want those three. So I was like, oh, man, I, I can't handle my buds. I can't just, you know, whatever. I was, oh. You know, they're, like you said, they're talking, like, you know, you know, describing the guy and the season and the stats and stuff, and I'm just like, well, there's a lot of people, you know, who just had the best season of their lives, so this could be anybody. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and I just, you know, as soon as they said, didn't have to use a safety pass, like my heart almost stopped, like instant goosebumps all over. <laughs> um, like I just, I was overwhelmed with joy. It was, it was so crazy. And next thing you know, I'm being lifted up and carried over there by all my friends and you guys. And I'm like, ah, this is awesome. <laughs> okay. So the next thing that I want to talk to you about was, um, you were the yeah. only athlete who competed in multiple qualifiers and hit every single qualifier buzzer. How's it, what does it <laughs> feel like to be Michael Torres? <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? I mean, like, you know, I'm only this way because of you guys. Like, I came out here on the East Coast, uh, from the East Coast, after you guys did. And, you know, it was a different type of training. And I don't know, you guys just fit me well and helped prepare me the best that I possibly you know, could be prepared. Um, <clears throat> but no, I mean, like hitting all every qualifier buzzer that I, you know, attempted was pretty awesome. I mean, it, I don't know, it gives me sort of like a reassurance that, okay, yeah, I, I should be here, you know, third place or, or first place <laughs> or you know, just squeaking in because two people already qualified. You know, I it still finished the course and, you know, I'm strong enough to be con competing with, you know, the best of the best. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody's going to argue whether or not you deserve to be at the top. Uh, you, you, The way that you compete and getting to train with you and seeing your motivation and the way that you work, it's very well-deserved. <laughs> but I've got, so I've got this clip. Um, so I, this was at the third major. It was so close that we had to go to a judge's review and look at the footage. I'm going to show this. And this is where the magician counts. About. And he can make it through. This dismount oh, is yep. so, so wild. He's matching on each hold, though, which means he's either tired <laughs> or he just is hoping to save. That's like my signature move right there, though. And so you, you should have expected that. He just here. He can dismount. Hold Ooh, tight. Hold tight. Hold boy, tight. He is gritting hold down. Tight, hold tight. <laughs> is it <laughs> sippy toes? <laughs> okay, watch. I I took a cell phone video of the screen to slow it down and look at how close oh. your feet come to the gray oh. ready right here oh. 
my gosh. Oh, that's nuts. Oh, and the toe. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I do that, though. I mean, whenever we train, I always do some sort of, like, weird flop, you know? <laughs> So you're prepared for it. You're, you've trained for it. That time it was that close, though. That's that's ridiculous. Like you can't get any closer than that. <laughs> Dude, and then especially like having to judge these things, it's like I was kind of mad at you. I felt really I bad be- for you and you and Swan, and I'm like, oh, dang! All these guys want to do is just see us finish the course, and they have to call us out and all this this stuff. And I'm like, ah, oh, it, oh, it sucks to be you guys right now, honestly. <laughs> Um, but so I've got your championship run here and I was hoping I could play it and, uh, maybe just get your thoughts on it. Uh, just kind of run through, give me, give me your thoughts on the obstacles or, or, you know, kind of just say whatever you want. But, uh, I thought it'd be fun to kind of show back your run and get your feedback. That's right. I was taped up. I was, I was dealing with some shoulder issues and doing everything I could to just kind of keep myself together and of course and whenever any competition they say go it all goes away but <clears throat> I was just trying to keep an overall really good pace after being in this is a being in the third major you know at, at that point you learn you have no choice but to just go without stopping but um I messed up on this one too didn't I no it was in the first run I was in yeah, my head a little second. bit with this. My first run, I, I jumped forward and had to jump back. and It was definitely a little bit in my head, but like adrenaline was pumping at this point, and especially with this jump. This one freaked me out. <laughs> it's just like you got to lay, lay yourself out and just – it's just like all or nothing. And I've messed up trampoline jumps before at NNL Finals, and – that's all I was thinking of was like, don't buckle, don't buckle, don't buckle. So <laughs> I was definitely, you know, over gripping on that trapeze bar. <clears throat> what did you think of this obstacle? All I was thinking here was, uh, oh, crap, here we go. Um, <laughs> I was thinking of, you know, the first version you guys had and, you know, how it pumped me out from just sitting there and taking so much time. So I just wanted to be as efficient as possible. Felt good, not as good as I did the first time through. I was a little bit pumped here, um, but overall still felt okay. Definitely over gripping, again because I had fallen on this obstacle and what was it major one I think. Yep. Yeah. Killed a lot of my energy here. I just couldn't get myself straight, and I kept thinking back to my first run in which I got a really big swing and just popped right off. So my mind was going crazy at this point. I don't even think I was breathing. Yeah, look, there it is. I'm breathing heavy. I'm trying to stay calm, but I'm pumped. I'm pumped, you know? <laughs> I had a game plan for this obstacle. Um, it was a little different feeling than I thought it might. And it was a little bit more pumped than I expected to be when I got there. I took extra moves like I did right there. And I just remember thinking, just just keep going, just keep going. Don't don't worry about the burn. Just just go, just go, just go. <laughs> um, but holy cow, was it getting to me. I wanted to get the heck off of this obstacle. And, you know, here's where I tried that unorthodox technique where everybody else was just, you know, tilting the board and getting back up. But honestly, I couldn't move my hands anymore. So I just wanted to give it a, you know, Ugh. last, you know, <laughs> Here we go. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and that's what happened. Man, I, I mean, it was. I mean, it was a pretty good run up to that point. I know in the run before that, you had failed the rodeo ropes because you had gotten a big backswing and the rope pulled off the sky hook. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, I thought that was a good run, especially when you caught that board. I was like, oh, he's got it. He's he's gonna get to the last obstacle. Like he's he's there. And then you went for that technique, mm-hmm. and. Uh, like no, I was just I was so pumped. I I didn't know if I took. I'll put it this way: I couldn't hang on one hand and reach my hand around the board. I was pumped. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait until we can train together again and you know hang out and 
this quarantine thing is all over and hopefully we'll all be back filming American Ninja Warrior soon and competing in the gyms and uh, everything kind of opens back up. But, uh, dude, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on and, and talking to me and just kind of sharing yeah, some of your experiences and your stories. Um, I think people are going to be really excited to just kind of see from some of the ninjas and hear just kind of the stories that you guys have. Yeah, thanks, man. Well, thanks for having me. This was awesome. All right, man. I will catch you later, and stay safe. All right. Sounds good, man. You too. Catch you later.